Hey everybody, it's Juanita McDowell with the Real Estate Technology Institute and welcome to our webinar today, Tweet Your Way to More Real Estate Clients. Today I plan to give you 13 power tips to success on Twitter. Let's go. You're looking at some of the webinar topics for today. Definitely want to give you the first things first. I've been on Twitter for years and I'm just discovering it's the little things that make a huge difference. So we're going to cover those as well as a few little 101 in case you're brand new to Twitter. Also, topics like how to get followers, how to promote yourself on Twitter. All of these are important in order for you to be successful on Twitter. You probably are already familiar with social media as well as Twitter. At least the webinar assumes that you have some fundamental understanding of Twitter. It is a social network and here's the catch. You get in and you get out. <laughs> you have 140 characters to deliver a message. It must be succinct, it must be clear, and it must be valuable to the audience you're trying to reach. If you're brand new to Twitter, let me give you three quick things to check after this webinar is complete. Check out a book by Joel Kahn and David Taylor from AskDavidTaylor.com, one of my favorite bloggers. Twitter Power 3.0, it's a great intro. It gives you the ins and outs of Twitter and things that I couldn't possibly cover in this 30-minute webinar. Also, check out the Twitter guide by Twitter.com. You can find that on support.twitter.com. Twitter also has a YouTube channel. You may want to take a look. Over 100 videos, some instructional, some to show the value of the platform. For my newbies on Twitter, let me take out a minute or two just to get you familiar with the platform. When you're ready to create content, there is a stylus in the corner and that allows you to send a tweet. Let's give that a click. At this point, you're able to write about what you're thinking and about what you feel your network wants to hear about. You can include location information, you can include a picture, but more importantly, think about what you're about to tweet. We're going to talk about what type of tweets get more retweets in just a second. Also, you're going to find your profile, which we're going to cover in a little bit more detail later because there's a bio and an important website link that you must provide. And then there are the settings of the platform. The settings allow you to make changes to things that you need from the platform, just like on Facebook. Do you want email notifications? How secure do you want this network to be? Do you want widgets for your website? Let's take a look. Once you enter the settings, you will have a security and privacy option. On another ready video, I mentioned the importance of making sure you have two-step verification and I showed you how to do that. But there's the login verification that you would use. There are other things that are important, the email notifications. You want to be notified when someone likes your tweets. You want to be notified, I believe, if your tweets are retweeted and so forth. And then also we'll talk a little bit later about having a widget on your website. This is where you would go to add widgets to your website. Now, otherwise, if you go home, you're going to see what your, all of the people that you follow, you're going to see what they're tweeting about. And if you like something, let me tell you the real magic in Twitter is the retweet. So as you can see, if I'm following Mashable, if there's anything that I'm following that I really want people to know about, I can simply share and hit retweet. Now, how does that work? Let's look at Joe. Do you really want to change? Get moving today. Take action now. What makes this very powerful are a couple of things. The hashtags, which I'll go into detail about later. And also, I can hit the retweet, which means that I could share it with my network of followers. Just hitting the retweet here allows me to add a comment, but I don't have to. I think it's good, a good practice to do that, but you certainly don't have to. And then when I hit retweet, my network not only sees it, but in addition, he knows that I have retweeted it. It's a good way to get the attention of someone you're following. But only retweet if you really feel it's relevant to your audience. If there's a tweet that you put up, let me show you how to delete a tweet. We'll go to my Twitter feed. Any tweet that I put up, to delete it, hit the three dots, come down, 
and you can see how I can delete a tweet. Now what's very important also is that I have messages. On Twitter I can direct message someone privately. So that means I don't want everyone to know about it. I simply can do a new message and anyone that's listed here under my followers I can basically send a message to. And also there's a search Twitter which we'll talk about shortly. If you ever want to get more marketing smart with Twitter, I recommend HubSpot, which you may be familiar with, but they have a great webinar they do on how to use Twitter for marketing and PR. So give it a look. Whenever I'm asked the question about how to use Twitter and what should I be doing on Twitter, well, there's a couple of questions. To get more out of your usage, entrepreneur.com actually came out with a guide to mastering Twitter for business. Let's review the four C's that they recommend. So you should, number one, be consuming must know information. Twitter is a great place where experts are sharing great information. And this is a place where you can consume that information. They're sharing links. They're taking you to different websites. They're giving you the information that you need. So you follow someone that you trust and someone relevant to what you're trying to accomplish. Also, you are a content creator, so information you think your network needs, you need to create it and share it. Your goal is to become a thought leader in your industry, in your area. Curation, curation, curation in 2016 is not that you have to know everything, but you need to know who does and how to gather that information about you so that you can deliver it to your audience. And then you'll be recognized for knowing where information is and kind of filtering through what the most important part is. Communication with your client, current client base, any potentials, and should I add, any former clients. Twitter, in addition to being a social network, it is a communication platform. Don't forget that. So let's start with our first tip. It's one that you know, but please don't take for granted. Take care of your profile first. That is so important and that's one that I think I missed in the beginning when I first joined Twitter because I didn't realize that my profile doesn't just stay on Twitter. It gets circulated by Twitter. What do I mean? First of all, let's start at the beginning. We know that the job of Twitter and other social networks is to draw traffic to our site. We have mentioned this over and over on a lot of our online marketing videos. So we get it. You people will find us on Twitter and hopefully that will drive traffic to our website or our blog. However, what I really want you to understand is the importance of having a very professional profile that showcases you what you do and basically tells your story. I shouldn't guess at what you do if I see very professional cover art because it should deliver an explanation that substantiates what you're all about. More often than not, people will be looking at you on a mobile device. So you can see clearly there are important things here that you need to make note of, including your bio, short, short, short. You have one URL to showcase. And you'll also see that people can look at your tweets, your likes, and so forth. I used Upwork.com for my cover art. If that's an issue for you, maybe you don't want to spend a lot of money, then I recommend Fiverr.com. That's F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Now let's talk about the bio. Bio should be nice and short from Twitter Power 3.0. Their great formula for good bio is professional description, professional description, and it could be another professional description. Then who likes, meaning that you then give your personal information. So as an example, Dave Taylor, who co-authored the book with Joel Com is a blogger, entrepreneur, tech geek, la 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 la, and also a proud single dad of three great kids. Now, why is this so important? Why am I getting all excited about a profile and a bio? Well, because Twitter, like Facebook and other social networks, they will email people and say, here's a suggestion based on the person you just liked. So take a look. That means that you could be one of these people that drops in someone's email. And when that happens, you want to be ready. Therefore, take a look at what the person sees when they receive the email. They will see the picture. That's why your 
your picture needs to be, I'm not going to actually say quote unquote professional, but it needs to have that likability factor running through it. Make sure you're smiling. Also, your bio, the first few words of your bio need to really hit and target what you do because that it gets truncated in the email. So it has to be interesting enough for me to want to click on it. And then you can see within the email, I can follow you. I don't have to go to Twitter and do that. URL, very important. You get one to showcase on Twitter. Remember that URL, in my opinion, should be your website or your blog site. That's the whole purpose. Now, let me give you an example. I'm on my, fo- on my mobile phone. Now I get, as I always do from Twitter, you have a new follower on Twitter. Now look how Diane basically gives herself an opportunity to get a new follower in me. I see, number one, she's followed me. Number two, her face has a lot of likability to it. And number three, I can basically read her bio. It sounds interesting. It sounds fun. In addition, she loves to laugh. I have access to her URL, her hub address. So with one click, check out her website. Another reason your website needs to be on point. Check out her website. And you know what I can decide? I think I'll follow her. Or maybe the bio is right there, friendly enough, I can hit follow from the email and never even go to Twitter. Well, of course, that would take me to Twitter, but you get the idea. I'm ready to log in and follow this person. And I should also mention that Twitter probably gave her my credentials, which is why she became a follower of mine. And they matched us up. So if I had wife, mom, remember I had that in my bio, social media, that may be how they saw that the two of us could be a good match. Now I will, let's talk about, about the hub address because some people use their website and that's fine. I do that, but there's a website about.me, which I call a digital billboard about you can, can give you an opportunity to basically send people here All of your social media connections, including Facebook and Pinterest and LinkedIn, can be on your About Me page. And the person who clicks on this URL can quickly visit your website. This is basically a kind of workaround to getting other things on Twitter. Bring them to one site where they can access other sites. It's just a thought. Now, about.me is very popular. If you don't have one, I advise you go ahead and sign up for a free profile account. In fact, real estate agents are getting in on the action, including pictures and backgrounds of the real estate that they sell, as well as personal details about themselves. Some are just straight professional, but you can see from the background, they're agents, and they tell you what they do. And of course, there's that great contact information on how to reach them. Tip number two. Well, what do I tweet about? Here's a reminder. Remember, start with the goal and let that goal drive you to determine what you're going to tweet about. Let me give you an example. Let's say your goal is simply to join the conversation. Personally, if I was an agent, I want to know who is moving to my town. So let me give you a tool to make that happen. It's search.twitter.com. And where I have moving to Atlanta, Georgia, where I live, make that your city and state. Now, when I do that, what I'm looking for is a conversation I can join where someone has mentioned, I am moving to Atlanta, Georgia. That could be relocating to Georgia. It could be interested in a new home. It could be a number of things. But when I click that, then I'm able to see from the search on Twitter exactly where those conversations are taking place. So now what I can do is I can publicly direct a message at these people and maybe say, hey, if you need my help, I've lived here for 20 years, would love to help. Notice I didn't make a sales pitch, but now I want to join the conversation where the discussion involves moving to. This person is moving in seven days, but she may have a friend or relative that later is later moving to Atlanta to join her. So I want to be part of that discussion as an agent. What if your goal is to show you're active? You are a real estate agent with two feet in the business, not one, two. Well, clearly, if that is your objective, that's your goal, include tweets like the one I've listed before. They tend to make, well, let's say it this way, they tend to draw the perception that in fact, you are a busy agent and involved in the market. Let's deal with being the real estate expert. 
first. If you want to be the real estate expert, start by making sure you follow associations, news outlets that provide great real estate information. Might I suggest NAR, NAR Research, which is really great. Great information. I love it. I, I can't say enough about NAR Research. And two, and the next one that I love is Inman. Inman has LinkedIn channel. It also has a Twitter account. But again, great sources that will allow me to retweet. I'm very selfish about my Twitter uh, followers. The people that I follow, I want them to basically have great information. I want to give great information and share it, but I also want the people I follow, when I'm reading their tweets, I want them, those tweets to be valuable and of use to me and the audience that I believe follows me. All right, tip number three, master hashtags. Everybody's all been out of shape about hashtags. Now, let me just tell you what I believe. The easiest explanation I can give you is this. Hashtags allow people to easily follow topics they're interested in when hashtags are used. Hashtags are invented by people like you and I, Twitter users. We can create any hashtag and what it does is it allows someone else to pick up and follow the conversation, discuss the event. That's all it is. There are real estate hashtags that you should know. Those like the one on the screen. And I will tell you, Zillow has given you a 30 Twitter hashtags article. Every real estate agent should know. Take a look at this. The link is down below. Let me give you a quick little reminder about hashtags. When you're new to Twitter, you might get all excited. You don't need to overdo hashtags. One or two will do the trick. Now, let me give you a couple of quick tips. Define your audience. Know who they are. Know who you're looking to target. It may be a first-time home buyer. It may be investors. It may be sellers. But if you know your audience, then you know what type of content they need. And that's why tip number four is so valuable to you because you are going to wonder, well, what do I tweet about? Well, my question is, well, what does that audience need to know? Knowing that will enable you to get a tweet going in terms of to satisfy that audience. You can even go back to LinkedIn and LinkedIn may share articles and you can actually tweet out those links in your Twitter stream. Tip number five, a little bit of bad news. It's not all about you. It is about the audience that you're serving. And in fact, I go back to, if you can remember this, you will always create content for your audience first. Let me give you a sense. And what really brings this about? I want you to put yourself in my shoes. I want you to think, let me help people that are relocating to my town. What can I tell them about my community? If you really understand that, then you don't have to, you never have to ask the question of what do I tweet about? Get your camera, get your video camera, get any information, news stories about the community and say, I am now serving the person who's moving here. So that means that from your Twitter stream, it's like a community page almost. I consider you the community expert. Talk about no like, and trust. I really trust you. I really believe you know this community. And now I want to work with you. I want you to find me a house. You're the person who I believe can actually get me exactly where I want to be. And when you do that, you are truly now in a service oriented type of share. And in fact, that's what makes social media so valuable to people because they are interacting with people that are passionate about sharing and really caring. Tip number six. Again, you can be a Twitter user for years and figure this one out, maybe, you know, at some random time. But, you know, it's, it's what I've got to cover because it's an important tip to being successful on Twitter. What's working, what's not working. We used to have a saying in, in corporate America, well, the data doesn't lie. So in this case, I'm going to use the same type of spiel. It doesn't lie. Look and see what analytics are already in place for you so you can actually improve or continue what you're doing. So take a look at this one. I'll go ahead and show you my Twitter, my analytics stream. Analytics.twitter.com gets you to where you can see, okay, how am I doing? I'm tweeting. Well, it looks like in the last 28 days, 3,700 um, impressions were on my, uh, for on my tweets. I had uh, 292 people that looked at my profile, or that was the number of profile visits. And I also had a top tweet 
Well, let me take a look at that top tweet. Why? Because I want to see if in fact, th is this the type of tweets that my network wants to see? Interesting. Avoid hacks on these big applications. They're interested in that. And notice there's a YouTube video that I included in this tweet. Okay, so my network wants to see YouTube videos and they want some tech tips. So take that and you'll know what you'll tweet about next. Wait, it looks like I'm down 60% of my tweets. Must have had a busy week. So now looking at the analytics, I'm motivated to say, okay, why don't you get back on your tweeting? You, you, you can't slide, you gotta keep it up. And that's another thing that analytics will do for you. So now one more thing I wanna say about this. When you see your top tweet, that is something that you may decide is so important to your audience, you wanna pin it to your stream. Which brings me to my next tip. You can pin a tweet. Let me show you how to do this. Go to your Twitter stream. As you can see, I pinned something to my stream. But let's then go and find another one. Here's an example, just so you can see how to do it. Hit more, and then you can pin that to your profile page. Now, if you already have something pinned, watch what happens. This will replace any previously pinned tweets. Are you sure? If sure, hit pin, and then that will be the new tweet that gets pinned to your, to your stream. No matter what time that tweet went out, that was what stays at the top of your stream. Tip number eight, I want you to understand there are certain tweets that are more valuable than others. Why? Because they're more retweetable, if you will. People are more apt to retweet certain types of tweets. Let's take a look. It's important to know that a photo in a tweet has a 35% more likely chance of being retweeted. Video, 28%. Quote, 19%. Stats, 17%. So when you're thinking about what to tweet, here's your tip. These type of tweets are retweetable and providing this gives your tweet a boost. And remember, social media success means people share what you post. Tip number nine, easy, breezy, and short. I don't think I need to say more. Avoid the constant sales pitch. Let me give you a rule of thumb. 80%, 80% of your tweets should not be salesy. <laughs> Remember, valuable information that helps your target audience is what we want. That's it. Tip number 10, well, Juanita, who, to, who do I follow? Well, I'll say this, choose carefully. Just don't follow anyone. I'm very selfish about who I follow. I want them to be people that put up great content that I can share, that I can learn from. Well, be careful. Don't follow just anybody. I like to follow people that are smart, post up good tweets, that share great information, that I can retweet. The value is there with the followers. And I really want you to be careful. Here's a warning. You don't want a one-to-one. -one. I follow you, you follow me. And it looks even. We don't want that. You want to have more followers. And you want it to be clear that you have more followers. People that are following you. So here's your tip. Make a list of important, relevant, interesting people who are active on Twitter and share great content. That's who you should follow and then take a look at who they're following to get even more ideas. Tip number 11, it's so important. I've got five ideas behind it. A, B, C, D, and E. How do you get people to follow you? Well, let's take a look at this one. Number one, content rules. Great content, people will find you. Google will help with that. So remember, post up good content. Go back to what we said earlier, good content that your audience needs. Also, add Twitter to your website. And you'll see that I have my Twitter stream on my website, but here's a little tip. Make sure there's a follow button on your website widget. And that's something I need to change. I'll be changing that this week. Just notice that as I was preparing this webinar. But make sure you have that follow link because again, no one has to go to Twitter, find you, and then follow you. You're making it easy for them to do that. Speaking of making it easy, if you have a Facebook business page, you can add a Twitter tab to that page. 
Take a look at how you do that. Go to facebook.com forward slash apps. It actually takes you to the games, but that's okay. You're going to go look in the box there, type Twitter, and that's going to bring up the Twitter tab option. So when you do that, visit the website so you can go ahead and set that up. 11D, please. Well, there are three unofficial rules, keyword being unofficial rules on Twitter. Number one, if you follow someone, they might follow you back. Number two, if you favor a user's post, now they might check you out. I know I do. Now, will I follow you? It depends. It depends on where I land when I click on your URL and what you're all about. Do you fit in with my network and what I'm all about? And number three, if you offer something of value, like a white paper or an ebook, you know, people are likely to follow you, especially if that's contingent, if your offer is contingent on a follow. Those are just those unofficial rules to think about. And last but not least, I would be remiss in my, in my responsibility to you if I didn't mention, certainly if you pull out your wallet and pay, Twitter would be happy to take your money and allow you to purchase ads so that certain tweets can be fed to a certain group of people. The way to set that up is go to ads.twitter.com. If you're a brand new Twitter user, you'll need to wait a couple of days until you get some more tweets and follows under your belt. Tip number 12, Twitter tools to check out. I'll call this your homework. These are third party applications because Twitter is open source. There are third party tools that you can actually use and will allow you to feed into your Twitter stream and give you different information and different functionality. So let's take, it a, few, take a look at a few. Number one, one of my favorites, TweetDeck. And you would access TweetDeck by going to tweetdeck.twitter.com. And as you can see on one page, I see my activity, my messages, and my notifications. There's also Twitter Local. If you're looking to reach and communicate with the local Twitter followers, take a look at that. You will need to download Adobe Air to your computer. And then there's Tweepy. Go figure. Tweepy takes a look at your profile and suggests users that might fit in with what you're trying to accomplish. And then there's also Twitonomy. You got to love analytics. It really helps you stay on track. This is an application that really analyzes your followers for you. If that's something you want to do, take a look. And last but not least, tip number 13. Yes, we made it. I want you to follow past clients to retain the relationship. According to the National Association of Realtors, 86%, large number, of consumers who use their realtor the first time do not return a second time. And these are realtors that they like. And I maintain it's because you're not staying in touch. So let's say, how do we create a list of our former clients on Twitter so we can kind of keep up with them and what they're doing? Well, Open up your Twitter account and go to your account menu and click on list. Go down the page and click on create new list. List name, former clients. I recommend that it be private and so that you can only, you'll be the only one that can access this list and then save the list. Not only will you be able to see what your past clients are doing, but you can also favorite their tweets and retweet certain things they're doing. It's just a touch point with you over the years. Just keep them in mind because this list now can be seen as an option. You can see your followers or as an option, see just your former clients who you're following on Twitter in your stream. And that concludes this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm ready to take all the Twitter questions that you have. Now I want to thank everybody for staying for the entire webinar. And let's talk about those perks I promised earlier. The first perk is the reti.us website. And if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, it's an amazing resource. Uh, our team has built 
over, gosh, I think 600 instructional videos, articles, product reviews, webinars, and more to help you learn anything you want about real estate technology, marketing, social media, and you learn at your own pace anytime. It's, it's a really, really well put together site. In fact, in fact, we just completed a redesign and reorganization, which I really like. And it's really, it makes the entire site just so much easier to use and it allows users to just find content so much quicker uh, and just some great stuff to learn on every visit. So you can click on the free test drive button on the site to check out over 25 videos to get a feel for the site and our amazing team of instructors. And if you like what you see, you can sign up for an account and become a member of the RETI network. That's right, you get full access to the full RETI library with over 600 instructional videos and articles. In fact, I think it's time for another perk. Our usual price is $19.95 a month, but as a bonus for attending the webinar, you can use the promo code RETIWEB and you can get your first month for only $1.99 or you can opt to sign up for it an entire year for $99.95. You can't beat that, but now this offer is only good for those watching this webinar. So if you haven't done so yet, please check out the site and sign up today. Go to www.reti.us forward slash sign up. And if you sign up now, please let us know in the chat room. We'd love to acknowledge you and welcome you to our network. Okay, that concludes the main portion of this webinar. We're going to go ahead and open this up for questions. I'm going to turn this over to the ready instructor who is on board to answer any questions you have.